as dying, and behold, we live. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This being our first indoor Ash Wednesday, with basically no restrictions for the first time in two years, it occurred to me this morning, first at 8.30, and then was confirmed again at noon, that this may be the first time in a long time that someone you are not related to will touch you on the face. I know it's the first time in a long time for me that I have touched the face of someone that I am not related to. If that is the case for you, then I'm sorry, but at the same time not sorry, that the words that will accompany that touch will be, remember that thou art dust, and to dust thou shalt return. I do wish the words would be more cheerful, but I also know that we desperately need to hear its brutal truth. The irony of this pandemic is that we have both been made painfully aware of our mortality. Heaven knows every single day we were given the statistics. How many deaths nationally? How many deaths locally? We remember very well images of makeshift morgues in Wuhan, in New York City, and other places across the world. And yet, at the same time, in some cases, we have gone to great lengths to deny our mortality, either by choosing to live as if there were no pandemic on one end, or on the other end, those who have chosen to isolate themselves from the entire world. COVID anxiety has highlighted the fundamental motivation of human nature, the fear of death. Now, we don't want to accelerate death, absolutely not. When you get in your car, when you leave here, I expect you to buckle your seatbelt. When you get home for the evening, I fully expect you to lock your doors. Before you eat your next meal, I do hope you will wash your hands. But we have seen prudence in many ways give way to something stronger, fear. This fear is why we've been so angry the past two years. This fear is why there have been more incidents on airlines than ever before, people fighting and acting out. This fear is why road rage is at an all-time high. Friends, I've seen more middle fingers in the past 12 months than I have in 30 years of driving combined. It's why we no longer speak to people We've known our entire lives. It's why for so many we are afraid to trust anyone or anything, individuals, governments, even the church. We can give it all kinds of names and explanations, and many of those explanations and names will be accurate, but at the end of the day, at the end of it all, the primary, primal drive for all of this is our fear of death. And that fear is the echo of the very first sin. Original sin that we've all heard about isn't passed down in our genetic code. It's passed down from generation to generation by our anxiety. And that makes this fear spread like a pandemic, but it's worse because in this case, no one is immune. No one is exempt from it. Now, I'd rather not die, but die, I will. And while I know this fact is true, sometimes, oftentimes, maybe most of the time, we try to live as if this fact doesn't actually apply to us. Therefore, we need the honesty of the church. Remember thou art dust. 
and to dust thou shalt return. We have to face our fear of death and name it for what it is, and no longer deceive ourselves by calling it something else. If we call it by a different name, then maybe then we can control that fear. Maybe then we can fix that fear. No, we have to face our own role in spreading this anxiety and what it has motivated us to do, what it's motivated us to do to one another, and what this fear has motivated us to do to ourselves. And that is, in part, what this day is all about. And that is why you are here. And that is why on this day, we have more visitors than come on Easter and more visitors that come on Christmas Eve because here we tell the truth. Here the church tells us the truth. Remember thou art dust, and to dust thou shalt return. But that's not all this day is about. On the cross, Jesus Christ went to the very place that terrifies us the most. He went to the point and place of death, and he destroyed its power by not dying forever. He defeated its power by his resurrection. Now, his death does not change the fact that we will die, but his death does change the fear it has over us as we now have the path of life everlasting laid before us. And I'd like for you to think about something tonight. In a few moments after we have our invitation to the observance of the Holy Lent, and when you come up to receive your ashes, try to remember where at the altar rail you knelt as you hear the words, Remember thou art dust, and to dust thou shalt return. And then later tonight, when you come back for communion, if you can, if it's possible, try to kneel in the exact same place as the body of Christ is placed in your hand or on your tongue. Think of your mortality in those ashes as you see the same sign of the cross made over you with the bread of life. And as you make that connection between our mortality and our Lord who has defeated the power and fear of death, ask the Lord Jesus to help you to die to that fear this Lent. Ask him to help you to die to yourself so that you may live in him. Ask him to help you make the words of St. Paul truly your own as dying, and behold, we live. Now, this may be the first time in a long time that you've been touched. Do not be afraid. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.